All right, all you a push people. So this is all just too long to give you in an email. I figure it's just a whole lot easier to tell you. And so as long as we're making grand a push timeline videos, why not make one more? What are we gonna do between now and the test is still a lot up in the air. We don't know how much time we'll actually be here at school or how much this will have to be happening electronically. We don't know if maybe you're still gonna take it May 8th or maybe if you're gonna take it a couple weeks after or something along those lines. We don't know. A lot is up in the air. But I'm not gonna spend the whole rest of this time saying we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. What are gonna be the constants for what we're doing from here on out? What are the things we know for sure? Well, I'm saying we know some things are gonna be your responsibility, some things are gonna be our responsibility. What's your responsibility? Review. As in review, 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 and more review. That's on you, cause you're your, you're your American history teacher. I almost said it wrong. Um, we've said all the way along, who's responsible for teaching you American history? That's you. I'm the one who's responsible for teaching you AP. And so the AP skills that I'm gonna be focusing on with you as our focus are these two. The evidence and the contextualization piece are gonna come up no matter what. Here's what I mean. We know multiple choice is out. They've said there will not be a multiple choice component on the test. We pretty much know DBQ is out. It is still possible that they might give a fewer document DBQ. Eh, maybe, we'll all know on April 3rd, but I really doubt it. And I'm predicting that that is not gonna happen. They already shortened their DBQ down to only seven documents. I don't think they're gonna go any less than that. I really don't. It's gonna be some combination of short answer and long essay. Well, short answer and long essay both have evidence and contextualization as a part of what you're gonna be doing. Selection of evidence is pretty obvious in both. Contextualization down here, you are still gonna write two to three sentences of it in an opening paragraph to any long essay they might choose to give you. But let's say they go the short answer route. You're right, you're not actually gonna be writing contextualization sentences in any of your short answer but the skill is exactly the same. You've gotta know what time period they're talking about, and you've gotta know the chronology of what things came when. The particular prompt that they're talking about, what comes before it, what comes after it, what's the donut that's bigger, I'm getting ahead of myself, we'll get to there in a second. So, your focus for this time is review. Our focus for what we're gonna be doing is evidence and contextualization. Those two skills are gonna come up no matter what. So, when it comes to evidence, okay? What we call selection, description, and connection. The words we want you saying in your head as you're writing is, I gotta name it, I gotta describe it, and then I have to connect it. And the connecting piece, as we already know from the way we've taught so far, is that that's going to your thesis. You have to show how your evidence is proving what you're saying. But of course, a thesis is only in a long essay. When it comes to short answer, you're not actually writing a thesis. Doesn't matter, it's still the same skill. So I'm gonna say the point that you're making. What's your evidence selection that you're gonna use to best make your point? You've always gotta pick good evidence. You've always gotta show them that you're not just naming crap that came off an identification list, but that you actually know what it is and you know how it fits. And then of course, contextualization. No matter what the long essay prompt, no matter what the short answer prompt, you've gotta situate this thing in its historical context. You've gotta come up with its period that it's in. So the big donut here that we keep talking about, what you want to do idealistically is come up with the time period of the prompt and then figure out what's the bigger time frame that totally encompasses the whole time of the prompt. And the thing just went dead and came back on. If you can't do that, we know that this is how you do it. You are perfectly fine with coming up with something that is the immediately preceding period. 
what came before it that helps explain the time period of the front. It is also okay to go what came after it and say this is what led to the blah, 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 blah that would come after. Remember, it's either or, either or. You don't have to do both. Any of these things is going to be contextualization. It's going to be these big skills that we're going to be working on between now and the test.